So today we're going to talk about scammers. Um, if you haven't seen uh, Mark Rober's channel or Jim Browning's channel, I'll link them down below. You really need to watch them. They are fantastic. I mean, these guys are pure geniuses who are going after these scammers and saving people a lot of money. But with that in mind, I was actually the victim of a scam myself. It was stupid. I should have recognized it, but I was in a hyper stressful situation. It was just crazy. So, as you guys are probably aware, I had an adult bookstore in New Jersey. And um, I was working three full-time jobs. My dad had just died. The city had saddled to use some legal trickery to saddle me with like $200,000 in debt. And they got it attached to my house by declaring my house a part of my dad's estate. It was crazy. So, I, it was, I don't remember when it was. It was either Valentine's or Super Bowl. It was, it was a crazy busy day at the pizza shop. I was like, literally, I was straddling the phone in my arm talking to these people and my brother while um, delivering pizzas. <laughs> and so I was like a third party in this. Now, it really the, the method was for me to get a gift card and send money via a gift card, which is normally a pretty big red flag. Um, but again, I was in a hyper stressful situation. It was just crazy. And I wasn't the one who initially interacted. My brother received the call and gave me the number. Now, it's important to recognize beyond just the, the crazy situation I was in that the methods used were actually not uncommon at the time. It was actually pretty common to pay your bill by going and getting a prepaid card to pay your bill. That was actually a pretty common way of doing it for people in New Jersey at the time. They've since changed the way they take payments as a result, by the way. And on top of that, they took steps to assuage my initial, you know, wait a minute, is this a scam? My initial thought was, is this a scam? Um, when you dialed the number they gave you, it brought up the same exact voicemail system and infrastructure as if you called Atlantic City Electric. So they actually copied Atlantic City Electric's entire voicemail system. The trick was, and I didn't recognize this till afterwards, of course, no matter what option you picked, you were being forwarded to a number in India. <laughs> so they copied the whole voicemail tree and it just all forwarded to the same person. Of course, you had no way of knowing that. So they said that, um, now the way this scam worked is they said that um, you had refused the installation of a smart meter. So your power was being turned off because the smart meter was mandatory. I'd got no notice of a smart meter. This worked very well because this is actually what was happening at the time. Um, I, literally, just a few months earlier, I had a similar problem with the water company. They were actually talking to me in a very derogatory manner, in a very nasty manner, um, about a smart meter for the house, um, a wireless thing so that they can just drive by and read your meter. And they were threatening me, and, and of course I got nasty back, which made them nastier, and I told them to go fuck themselves. And when I finally got a supervisor, he's like, why won't you let us install a smart meter? I was like, I don't give a fuck about your smart meter. Come install whatever the hell you want. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's like, well, why'd you ignore our letters? I was like, what letters? I was like, I don't have any letters. And he says, well, you know, you know, the um, fall of 2019, I was like, that was my father. And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, my father, my father died Christmas Eve 2019. He probably got your letters. And I was like, now he's dead, and I'm handling everything, and I've never seen a letter from you. And his entire demeanor changed immediately when he realized that I wasn't just some nut job wacko who doesn't want to let the utility people on the property. And he, you know, he's like, he's, he apologized profusely. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't realize. You know, we have a the, apparently there's a pretty big problem with people um, not allowing utility personnel on to do maintenance to utility stuff like electric meters and water meters apparently that's actually a really big problem like to the point where you know utility people are being chased off by dogs and shotguns <laughs> and we're, we're talking Levittown, pennsylvania here but apparently that's a pretty big problem 
I never knew. I, mean, I don't give a shit. You want to change the meter? Come change the goddamn meter. I was like, if you need to get into the house, I'll have to be here, of course. But otherwise, I don't give a shit. But there, they apparently have such a problem with people um, refusing access for this kind of thing that they have to get nasty. That they have to take um, aggressive action to convince people to pull their heads out of their ass and deal with this kind of thing. So um, the electric guy was coming off the same way. So not only was I used to this kind of activity from utility companies, and not only was it common to use prepaid cards to pay utility bills, the area of New Jersey was a pretty poor area, so it's pretty common for people to go get a green card to, you know, prepaid card to pay their electric bills. They don't have bank accounts and stuff like that. So that all combined, plus they had my account number, plus they copied the voicemail system. This all seemed so legit. I even still suspicious it was a scam. I dialed the number, because it it's also common for utilities to have a toll-free number and a local number, a 609 number. I even called the number on my utility bill, and as soon as I heard the same voicemail system, I figured, okay, it's legit, it's going to the same place, and I hung up. If only I had stayed on the phone. <laughs> but again, I was working. I, I, was, I, I, did, I think I did 37 deliveries that day. <laughs> I was busy as living hell, working three full-time jobs, 120 hours a week. You know, enough pegs fell into the right slots for me to accept this was real. And um, eventually, I sent him the $750. And he, he called up and he wanted more. And I was like, that's it. I'm done. You have no idea what it took for me to get that money. I was like, you send me a bill. He's like, well, we're coming out today to turn off the power. And I was like, well, I'll be there with my shotgun. He's like, did you just threaten me with a gun? I was like, yes, I did. I will shoot you dead if you come and try to turn off my power. <laughs> uh, he stopped calling after that. <laughs> I was like, I have the electric. I had my brother, actually had my brother barricade. You have to come through our store to the back which is not accessible to the public to get to the meter. So the utility people have to come through the business and out the back door, which is not accessible from the outside. I had him barricade the meter so nobody could get to it. You know, that would force them to turn it off at the pole. And I even told the guys, like, if I see somebody climbing up the pole, I'm shooting them off of it. <laughs> and, well, um... I called the electric company, left a message with them. I called the utility commission, left a message with them. The very next day, lady called from the electric company and said, um, yeah, you don't owe us anything. There's no meter change. Yeah. That sucked. That sucked hardcore. $750 just gone after my manager the actually the owner at the shop i forget what he told me but um he he was indian and and this uh, the um he um i figured this was probably india and uh because i guess now i remembered okay i heard the the dut dut sound of a call being transferred and the delay and that's a call being transferred overseas so he gave me some choice words in india to use to insult the guy <laughs> So I called him and I gave him those words and he immediately dropped his American accent and resumed his normal Indian accent and, and strung a whole bunch of what I assume were epithets at me <laughs> before I hung up. Um, they then disconnected that number. That number no longer worked. Um, hopefully the electric company already got access to it. They told me they already called it and confirmed the, it was their voicemail system they copied. So, I mean, these people, are they're good. They, they know how to work it. I mean, I'm a smart critter. I look out for this kind of shit, and I fell for it. Uh, so what are the red flags? That, what are the reasons I fell for it? Uh, well, my brother got the initial call. So since the call came to the business, and I wasn't there, I just assumed it was valid. And then even when I got suspicious, there were aspects that convinced me it was legitimate. So the exact same voicemail system... American accent, had my account number, paying in this paying a utility bill in this manner was a common way to pay utility bills when it had to be same day um, because of 
recalcitrant people, you know, people you know, fucking around. I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. So they had methods for low-income people to take care of bills like this, even though we were a business. But again, it was common for that to be paid that way. So that wasn't unusual. Um, the complete copy of the voicemail system convinced me the number was legitimate. They had my account number and my information, including my last bill amount, which I don't know how they got. Um, so that convinced me it was legitimate. Um, yeah, it's just... And the smart meter thing, I had just gone through that exact scenario with um, the water company, which is what made me think of telling the guy I was going to shoot him with a shotgun. <laughs> That's why I thought of it. Because <laughs> of the water company thing. And... Um, so yeah, these these fuckers are smart. I mean, it's, it's you know it's the same thing I tell people why you should never talk to cops, ever. I am very very smart. I have a high IQ. I'm well educated. You know, I'm a very intelligent person. I can't beat a cop because no matter how smart I am, no matter what degree I have, no matter what education I got, no matter what math tests I can pass. That cop's got 30 years experience and you're never going to beat that. He might not have book knowledge, but he has street knowledge. He has the raw experience of doing this as a lifetime career. And you are never, ever going to beat that except by pure dumb luck. I don't care how smart you think you are. It's the same thing with the scammers. They do this for a living. They do it thousands upon thousands of times. You're... You, you you can't beat them with pure logic. You just have to not participate. What I should have done was say, no, I'll greet your people at the door. We'll deal with this with the police. That's what I should have said. And that probably would have scared them off. Because we were caught up on our bill and we weren't behind on anything. There was no reason for them to come out the same day. It's just coincidence that I happened to deal with the water company a month and a half earlier for the same exact scenario. And that was legitimate. You know, That was legit, the water company. And... um that wasn't a scammer but you know it happens so do not demonize these people who fall for these scams do not think less of these people do i mean watch mark robert's video today he shows video of these poor people being screwed by these guys and the way they do it yeah um it comes across as if it's your fault and they 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 even make you do things so that you think you did it you think you caused this problem and now you have to go through some herculean efforts to fix it it's it's not the victim's fault do not blame the victim we have to educate people we have to create we also need to create laws that make the necessity of those kinds of actions for example the meter thing and stuff like that we have to make sure that those kinds of things are actually illegal, that they can't do it that way. Um, because the water company is going to come out and turn off the water. <laughs> like they were days away from doing it. And, um, you know, if the guy didn't happen to realize that he wasn't talking to some wacko who didn't like utility people, you know, who knows where that might have gone. So do not victim blame. We need to fix our system to make sure that these scams have no niches to operate in so that it can't happen again. You know, even to the point of making it illegal for a utility company to take a payment that is not traceable or reversible. So no co no gift cards. <laughs> you know, prepaid cards, you know, none of that crap. And um yeah, it's shit happens. It sucks, you know. And when you as people get older, their thinking slows down and it becomes easier and easier to scam them. You know, it's just when the guy tried for more, you know, I shut him down because it's like, you know, fuck it at this point, I'll just wait for you with a shotgun. <laughs> you know, a 60, 70, 80 year old person is not going to do that. So just be understanding and watch those videos, learn from them, educate your own family, protect your own family. You know, keep an eye out on your neighbors if you see them doing weird things like this. You know, if you're at the store and you see a neighbor buying gift cards or at the bank, you know, don't be afraid to speak up. Say something. You just might save somebody their life savings.